Hello, and welcome back. Today, we're going to go through my design process of how I come up with a part to solve a problem. I use Tinkercad to design all my parts, so I'm going to show you how easy and quick it can be to come up with a design to solve a problem. So my problem is, I have this microphone arm that attaches to your desk, but there's really nowhere to run the cable. So I improvised. I put bread ties on it. Not the most attractive thing to look at. I knew it was only temporary, and I was going to design something eventually, so I thought I would take you along for the ride. So in my head, I have an idea of a clip that will snap on to these square bars, and it will have a little hook, basically, that holds on to the cable. So let's get our dimensions. Okay, this way we'll just say 10.2. This way we'll say it's 10.5. And the cable itself is about 4.15. If you don't have a digital caliper, I highly suggest getting one, because these are very handy. Alright, let's jump right into Tinkercad and start designing. Okay, now that we're in Tinkercad, and my mouse pointer is showing this time, what I like to do, because I have my measurements, I like to start out with a piece that I can just remember though, so I won't have to constantly check my notes. So we're going to go ahead and make this 10.2 by 10.5. Then we're going to grab a cylinder, turn the sides all the way up, and make this 4.15. Back to 20. This is literally just, you know, a reference. Okay, so I know that it's going to be squared. So let's start there. Now I want this to also be about two millimeters all the way around, like the thickness. Uh, you'll understand as I go along. So I'm going to copy this, turn this to a hole, and for me, I like to, just so I know it's a snug fit, I'll go up 0.2 on all dimensions. So this will become 10.4, and this will become 10.7. Now, I know that I want 2 millimeters basically all the way around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this 12.4. And because this is 10.7, and I want 2 millimeters on either side, I'm going to make it 14.7. So, make this a little bit taller. Just so that I know for sure that it gets everything. Then we're going to highlight them both. Click a line. Center it this way. And then bring it to the edge. Now you understand a little better what I was saying. Let's go ahead and group them. Now this should be about two millimeters thick on all the sides. Now, to get a sort of clamping mechanism, because if I printed this the way that it is, it would just slide on and off. And then we are going to grab our round roof, turn it upright, pull it even with the bed, this is going to be eyeballed, basically. You'll understand what I'm making here very shortly. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Then we are going to duplicate this, pull it back, turn it into a hole, Come down a little bit, bring that size back up, come over, that looks about good. Let's go ahead and align this to the center, 
and we'll go ahead and group those. Okay, now I want this edge to line up with this corner, which I can't on the snap grid at one millimeter. So I'm gonna drop that down to 0.1 millimeter and then line that up. Perfect. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, then mirror it, drag another one over here and align those. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Then we're gonna go ahead and group these I know what you're thinking. What the hell are you doing? Just follow along. Take this box. I'm gonna bring it to the edge. Just like that. Then we're gonna duplicate that box. Bring it like this. Put it right on the edge, like so. And then we're going to duplicate it one more time. Turn it 90 degrees, come over here, and about right there. Now we're going to go ahead and group all of that. Do you kind of have an idea of what I'm doing yet? No? Keep watching. So we're gonna grab the cylinder we already made, copy it, bring it over, turn it into a hole, and remember to go up by 0.2, 4.35 by 4.35. Then we're gonna take another cylinder, drag it over, turn the sides all the way up, and now we basically want to get a tube that has a two millimeter thickness. So we're going to go shrink all the way down to 8.35. Make this taller, back to 20. We're going to bring this over, center it. and then group it. Perfect. Now, our cable will fit snugly in there, but we need a way to get it in there. So we're gonna make a channel. I want the channel to be a little bit tighter so that the cable doesn't just, you know, easily pop out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and make this the exact diameter of the cable. We're gonna bring it over here. Then we're gonna align it. Oh, look at that, perfect. Perfect on the first try. Then we're gonna group them. Now I know that if I bring this over here, I want this to be flush, but I already know that it's gonna stick out. See, it's sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is take another box, chop that off just a little bit, and group it, bring this over here, Try to get that pretty flush. That's about as good as we're gonna get. I don't think it'll register over to the print anyway. Then we're gonna make sure this is center. And then we're gonna group it. Okay. And then this is 20 millimeters, which is way too much, I think. So we'll drop it down to 10. Then we'll export it, and we'll jump right into Cura. So we have it open in Cura, and I want to print more than just one. So I'm going to turn on print sequence one at a time. Then I'm going to multiply these by three. Three should be good. Then I'm going to pull this over, grab these that it for some reason puts off the bed, 
So if you've never printed with the print sequence, these gray boxes show you basically where your print head is gonna go. So you, you don't want like, you know, to have it like this because then it's basically telling you you're gonna bump the other print while you're trying to print this one. So space them out, I mean, they can overlap a little bit and it probably won't hurt like that. But if you get too close, Cura won't even let you slice it. So we're gonna go with this. Then we're gonna see how good of a job I did at measuring and designing this. Okay, and it looks like they turned out pretty good. I know this video may have been a little bit hard to follow along, but it's really, I'm just trying to show you how simple it is if you have an idea to create it in Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a great way to start out with designing 3D prints. Uh, I've been using it pretty much since I learned the basics, so about a year now, give or take. And uh, yeah, I've tried Fusion 360 and I like it, don't get me wrong, but the quickness of Tinkercad for simple designs like this, it, it's just unbeatable, in my opinion. So yeah, give it a shot, don't be afraid of it, and uh, start designing. I hope this was informative, and until next time, have the best day ever. Rewind. So we're going to take our roof. So... Then, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this, pull it back, turn it into a hole, drop it by two millimeters. Then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this, pull it back, turn it into a hole, drop it by two millimeters. Then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this, pull it back, turn it into a hole, Bring it up a little bit, drop this by two millimeters, son of a bitch, drop this by two millimeters, bring it forward, what the hell did I do here?